protect their lives. And this is fundamental to everything we do at Discovery. Whenever we bring in changes, we ask ourselves, is this going to make our members healthier? Is it going to enhance and protect their lives, both now and in the future, making sure that the scheme is sustainable and still around 10, 20 years from now when our members need it? So I'm going to dive straight into the increase and the factors that we need to take into consideration when calculating the increase. And it's a very difficult tug of war between your long term sustainability of the medical schemes, making sure that the reserve stay sufficient and stay above the legislative requirements and making sure that when you bring in an increase, you bring it in in line with medical inflation so as to prevent what they refer to as a shock contribution increase in the future. What is meant by that is often what will happen is if you bring in too low of an increase in one year, you have to make up for that increase in later years. So a later stage, you have to bring in a much higher increase than would be required, and that's what they refer to as a shock increase. On the right-hand side, it's about the short-term affordability. Bringing in an increase that is affordable to members, taking into consideration things like the current economic crisis that we're in. So when we look at the medical utilize or the medical inflation, there's a couple of factors we have to look at. The first of these is the utilization of the scheme. How is it actually being used? What are the claims patterns that we are seeing? And you can see there on the screen that blue line that is just the COVID-19 demand. So admissions into hospital relating to COVID-19 out of hospital tests for it treatment for it, your annual vaccination, and you can see that there's definitely spikes amount amongst the utilization for COVID-19 within the waves. Makes perfect sense. The more people that are infected in the country, the more claims would be coming through for it. But between the waves, that demand does not go away. There's still claims coming through for COVID-19. There are still people being infected. People are still being tested on a daily basis for it. So there are there's a constant coming through of claims with relation to COVID-19. We also then look at your non-COVID-19 demand. This is demand that doesn't have anything to do with COVID-19. And the flat line there, your dotted line, is your pre-COVID-19 levels. That's where claims used to be before COVID-19. We expected them at that range, or that's where they were. And the orange line is your non-COVID-19 related claims. You can see it dips during the waves. It makes perfect sense. People not wanting to go and make use of, of medical facilities for the risk of high numbers of infected people in those areas. And often is the case of there's no beds available for other things because all the beds are being used up by your COVID-19 patients. But that medical need still needs to be taken care of. And then what happens is when you go between the waves, you actually have a higher than normal utilization of the medical schemes, where it's a much higher demand. You can see there in the middle going above pre COVID-19 levels. We then also need to look at the demographic risk to the medical schemes. And here is where you look at how the scheme is aging year on year. So all of us grow by a full year every single year. If the medical scheme was to stay exactly the same from one year to the next, the age of the medical scheme would go up by a year. Fortunately, discovery does tend to attract young new joiners onto the medical scheme, as you can see on the right hand side. So we're instead of growing by a full year every year, we're growing by about three months every single year. And three months doesn't sound like a lot, but three months in terms of medical claims makes a difference of about three to four percent higher medical claims every three months that the scheme ages. You can see there, just look at the chronic line, how the age line is going up, but the chronic line is going up a lot quicker than the age line, where we're actually at the point now that one in four members on discovery are registered for a chronic condition. So you're Demographic, demographic risk or the age of the scheme going up has a massive impact on the overall medical inflation year on year. So we now need to add the factors together that contribute to medical inflation. The first is your tariffs. This is what doctors charge, what its medication costs. That goes up by more or less CPI every single year. We're expecting that to come in at about 4.4% for next year. Your demographic risk, the aging of the scheme, that has a 3% impact on your medical inflation. And then the utilization, the above normal utilization due to 
the increase of utilization from COVID and the deferment of previous treatment that now needs to play catch up on, that has a 1.5% increase on medical inflation. We also have the impact or the, the, the deflationary factors that have an impact on your medical inflation. Vitality benefits, this has a definite deflationary impact because it's making healthy uh, members healthier. Healthy people claim less from the scheme, so that has an impact. And our risk management interventions, ensuring effective and efficient healthcare delivery, limiting fraud and waste within the industry, all of those reduce medical inflation. So taking that into consideration, it drops medical inflation by a full percent. So when you add all of this together, the expected medical inflation and what speaks directly to an increase med um, discovery would need to bring in is 7.9% for 2022. But we also need to look at the right-hand side of that equation, the short-term affordability for our members. And this is where we're looking at what Discovery did in 2021. And this was actually cited by the Council of Medical Schemes and an, as an innovative pricing strategy to support, to financially support households across South Africa. And it was exactly that, where we froze the premium increase. We needed to bring in a certain increase. But instead of bringing it in on 1 January, we brought it in midway through the year, freezing the increase that saved our members 2.2 billion rand, which we were able to take out of the excess reserves. And this this is really what, what Discovery has had to do going into next year. We need to look. We've got the increase that we know we have to bring in. Now, the actuaries needed to do that balancing act to sustain, make sure the long-term sustainability of the scheme to balances with the short-term affordability. And I found that your crucial tipping point is effective 1 May. What this basically means for you as a member, the contribution increase for 2022 is 7.9%, but it is deferred to 1 May. That means for the first four months, there is no contribution increase. Contribution stays exactly the same for the first four months. And then from 1 May onwards, increased by 7.9% for the remainder of the year. This means an overall weighted average increase of 5.3% for 2022. If I then move over onto the benefit enhancements for next year, and I'm going to start off with the trauma-related benefits. There's two existing benefits that have been enhanced, and then a brand new benefit that's been added on. So if we start on the left-hand side with regards to the trauma recovery extender benefit, this is a benefit that's been available on Discovery Health on certain of the plans, and it had very, very stringent entry criteria. It used to require you to spend multiple days in ICU for one of those five things listed there, the poisoning, severe anaphylactic reaction, things like that. And if you had been on the specific plans, had spent multiple days in ICU for like a near drowning, it would then you'd be able to apply to unlock this benefit, would cover additional out, out of hospital treatment, risk-based funding treatment for the recovery from the traumatic event, often things like physio, speech therapy, things like that. But it had, because of the very stringent entry criteria, it wasn't a benefit that was very widely used. Now, going into next year, we're opening this up to all Discovery Health plans, so it's no longer on selective plans. They're also changing the entry criteria where it's no longer multiple days in ICU, but rather a high acuity admission into high care, so multiple days in high care, or any amount of days in ICU for one of those five reasons, where you'd then be able to apply for the benefit. And also we've enhanced the cover to now include six counseling sessions for the year that the event took place, as well as the following year. And this count, the counseling sessions will be available to all family members on the policy. So if I was the person that went through a near drowning, my wife on the same policy as me would also be able to access counseling sessions. If we then jump across onto the right hand side of the presentation, this is the Allied Therapeutic and Psychology Extender Benefit. This is available on the executive and comprehensive plans for members that have run out of their medic or out of their Allied and Therapeutic sublimits within the above threshold benefit and need specific allied professionals, physiotherapists, chiropractors for those conditions listed at the bottom of the slide there. So what we've enhanced with regards to this benefit for next year is we've added on strokes and head injuries. But more importantly, we've taken away the two-year cover, per cover period limit 
what used to happen is now I've got one of the specific conditions. I'd need to apply for the benefit. Doctor would submit motivation. It would go to an external panel. They would then say, great, thanks very much. Here it is approved for the next two years. Two years later, because a lot of these conditions are ongoing, I'd have to go through that whole process again. Apply, motivation, external panel, often causing a lot of delays. That So we've taken away the two-year cover limit. Now it would be a case of for those conditions, you'd be able to apply a one off and it would be approved ongoing for as long as you needed those specific treatments. If we then jump across to the middle section, this is a brand new benefit that's been added on, which is basic dental trauma benefit. In a nutshell, I'm walking up the stairs, I trip, I fall and I knock out my tooth. Previously, I would go to the dentist and that would fund from my medical savings account. And I can tell you now, losing a tooth costs a lot of money from your medical savings and it essentially deplete your medical savings very quickly. From 1 January on all plans with the exception of key can essential smart, there will be risk based funding so it doesn't affect the medical savings for partial or complete loss of one or more teeth as a result of an accident or injury. With regards to the details, it has to be done within 30 days of the injury. There is entry criteria and protocols and guidelines that are applicable and it does need to be approved before the treatment starts. Overall annual limit of about 58,000 Rand per person. Moving over on to some of the other benefit enhancements, first of this on the top left hand side there is the assisted reproductive therapy benefit. This was a benefit that was brought in in 2021 for the comprehensive and executive plan members and it's a benefit that was taken up very widely. A lot of members very eagerly embraced this benefit. Some members even upgrading to those plans specifically to access this benefit. So we're enhancing the benefit for next year. We're adding on cover for the freezing of embryos as part of the IVF cycle. Cover is being extended to the egg donation cycle, including donor matching fees. Um, we're increasing the age for the donor matching cycle where it used to be cut off at 42, it's now cut off at 50. And then for qualifying members who are registered on the oncology program, we'll, we'll also cover for cryopreservation and storage of eggs and sperm for up to five years. Jumping across to the top right of the slide, this is the an, an aesthetic preoperative management program. Normally what would happen if I'm going into hospital for things like a joint replacement, colorectal surgery, coronary bypass surgery, these are massive, massive surgeries. The doctor would then say to you before the time, look, um, I need you to go for this list of tests, this assessment, you need to come and see me first so that we can see what risks are there before we actually put you under anesthetic. Because these are not part of the actual admission into hospital, you're not in hospital at the time, they would traditionally fund from your day-to-day -day benefits, so from medical savings account. Going into next year, for members that get an authorization specifically for those procedures, things like your joint replacement, colorectal, it will automatically unlock a basket of care where we would cover for risk-based funding for a nurse-led nurse preoperative assessment, consult with your treating doctor, as well as pathology, radiology, and lab tests relating direct, directly to your surgery. All of this funding from risk without affecting medical savings account. If we drop down to the bottom right there, the full cover options for dyspepsia management. Traditionally, with regards to dyspepsia, um, if I needed to access tests or treatment for it, any medication for it, it would come from my day-to-day -day benefits. If I needed to go and get a gastrointestinal scope done, I would need to have that scope done in the doctor's rooms to avoid a co-payment. If this was done in a day surgery or a hospital, there'd be a co-payment that would be applicable. Going into next year, we're bringing in the conservative care program, which is funded from risk without affecting medical savings account. This will cover for tests and medication for dyspepsia, referral for an appropriate gastroscope. And if the gastroscope is done within a day, the day surgery network, it would also be covered without a co-payment. Moving over onto the oncology benefits. From the oncology benefit point of view, Discovery has very rich oncology benefits where there's no limit on the oncology benefits. There are, however, threshold amounts of either 200 or 400,000 Rand, depending on the specific plan. And 
what that means is once you've accumulated oncology claims up to that 200,000 or that 400,000, then there'd be a 20% co-payment applicable on oncology treatment thereafter. But if you look at the middle of the slide here, we're now looking at what percentage of the oncology members actually use up that full 200 or 400,000. And you can see there it's less than 7% of oncology members that actually use up that full th threshold limit. And those that do, you can see half of them have very small co-payments as opposed to a massive co-payment within zero to 5,000 Rand. We also have the oncology innovation benefit. This was brought in a few years ago for your high end plans. We're now extending the oncology innovation benefit to your mid range plans, so your savers and your priority plans. For, and it's for a subset of specific cancers, so specific cancers and precision oncology medications that are covered under the oncology innovation benefit. These are medications that traditionally aren't covered by medical schemes whatsoever. It's very specialized medications. And now we're giving the opportunity for members on the mid range to also be able to access them with a 50% co-payment. Moving over now on to global best practices, and we're looking here specifically at hospital at home programs, and we're looking where are their programs being done throughout the world where members or people are able to access hospital level of care, but from the comfort of their own home. And you can see there's really some leading countries throughout the world, the United States, United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, all of these countries having some of the best healthcare systems in the world. And they're all introducing a hospital at home type program where you can get hospital level treatment, but at home. Discovery also was in a very unique position with COVID-19 to get a very valuable learning opportunity where we had over a hundred members that had admissions into hospital, but at home. So they had hospital level care, 24 hour a day remote monitoring with the use of the BioBeats device, but in the comfort of their own home, there were still nurses that would come out to their house two to three times a day, checking up on them, making sure everything's okay. But at the same time, they've got the BioBeats device monitoring things like ECG, pulse rate, oxygen stats, blood pressure. So if there was any problems, there was immediate intervention that could kick in and it is monitored 24 hours a day. But the people were able to recover in the comfort of their own home. So Discovery is very pleased to announce that going into next year, we're bringing in the Discovery Hospital at Home program. This will be available for all members 18 years and older that require an admission with a primary diagnosis of low acuity, meaning it's not a high intensity admission into hospital or for selective post-operative surgery conditions. So if I went in for a tendon operation on my leg, there's no reason for me to be in hospital other than to be monitored. Now, often what would happen is they'd want to monitor me for two, three days afterwards just to check any side effects or anything like that. Through the hospital at home program, I would be able to access this level of care, but in the comfort of my own home. The BioBeats device still monitoring me 24 hours a day, seven days a week, a clinical, clinical oversight from an entire care team of medical professionals and hospital level diagnosis and intervention. This is a doctor driven program. So this would be referred by your health professional. Your health professional will have a look at your case, say, you know what, you are a good candidate for a hospital at home admission, and they'd be in, then able to apply and refer you to our hospital at home program. Moving over on to patient community platforms, and this is something that has become very popular in recent years where people are diagnosed with conditions, they're looking for information, but they're also looking for a social support or a social aspect of it. And we looked at the, on the left hand side, the top five information places where members are getting information after being diagnosed with a chronic condition. The first area and the top one there with 58% is your doctor. Fantastic area for clinically accurate information. There's no social aspect to it, though. Your doctor's not going to do, have a discussion with you about, yeah, no, last week I also felt that way. They, ca they can't always sympathize or understand the situation you are in. They've not necessarily gone through that themselves. You can look at the online searches. This is a bit of a hit and a miss one, because if you hit the right website, the information's great. If you hit the wrong website, it could have been a 13-year-old sitting in their parents' basement typing this up. You don't always know how accurate the clinic 
clinical information is. Medical websites, no social aspect to it. Fantastic medical information, but I can also type in on any website five different symptoms and get 50 different potential diagnoses. So that does leave a bit of area and no social. Family and friends, fantastic social aspect. I'm getting the interactions that I need, not necessarily clinically relevant. Not all of us have a doctor in the family. And then we move over to social media. Same problem, fantastic social aspect, not necessarily clinically accurate information. So we needed to look at what are the key features for an online patient community for our members. The first of this is a social support, connecting with patients living with the same condition with real world experiences, accurate clinical information, making sure the information on there is being moderated by clinical professionals, medical professionals that understand the relevance of important and correct information. Personalized content, and this I don't just mean by clinic uh, condition specific content, but I also mean location specific content. What I mean by that is it's very easy for a doctor in the United States to comment on, you know, try this, do this. I don't think the doctor's ever gone through load shedding. He wouldn't understand the South African context, wouldn't understand what is and isn't available in South Africa. So it's vital that the content is personalized to you and your situation. And if you can achieve those, it actually results in much better healthy outcome, healthcare outcomes for members. So we're very pleased to announce that going into next year, we're bringing in three communities. These are going to be powered by My Health Teams, which is an international patient community. But we're specifically addressing these three areas, my diabetes team, my heart disease team, and my long COVID. We're getting South African medical professionals to moderate this, to make sure that the information on there is correct and accurate to a South African context. All Discovery Health members will be able to access this. You don't need to be registered on the chronic condition. So anybody on Discovery will be able to access this. If I then move over onto the next section, and this is with regards to Discovery Pay. So this is a as part of Discovery Bank. I'm bringing it into the health presentation. You'll see why in the next couple of slides, how this ties back to a health membership or how it ties back to you as a member of Discovery Health. So the first thing I want to start here, this, although this is work that run through Discovery Bank, you don't need to be a Discovery Bank account holder, card carrying member of Discovery Bank in order to access this. Anybody on Discovery Health or Vitality will be able to access the Discovery Pay platform. How it would work is you download the Discovery app, you activate your Discovery Pay account, and you'd be able to transfer funds into this Discovery account that you'd be able to use for three specific things. The first of these is to pay contact. So you could pay money over to any Discovery Bank account holder with something as simple as their cell phone number. So there's no longer need to exchange bank details, check this bank number three times every time you're putting it in, just check, okay, it is the right one, all of that. You can literally make payment over with cell phone numbers. If you jump across the right-hand side, you've got your pay-as-you-go jimming, which I will go through in a bit more detail in the next couple of slides. But in the middle there, and this is why I've brought this in as part of the health presentation, is the paying for healthcare services. So this gives you the opportunity to pay for your potential shortfalls. If you're on a smart plan, for example, the 55 rand, co-payment that you'd need to make if you've run out of savings where you'd need to pay over to cash over to the doctor you could pay over to the doctor using the discovery pay account sorry i just want to click this one so there's two specific sections with regards to paying for health claims the first of them for me, it's, it's a nice to have, but it's not the main reason, is where providers are submitting claims. So you can, this is where a provider automatically submits claims, and it tells them there and then, look, there's a 55 rand co-payment on this consultation. You'd be able to pay using the bank account. But for me, where the real power of this benefit comes in is the second one, where doctors aren't submitting claims to the medical scheme. So what will often happen here is as you're walking past reception, she prints out a... Um, account for you and hands it to you. One of two things happens. It, some people will take that picture straight away, send it through to Discovery. Some people will, yes, I'll do that when I get home and put it on the car seat next to them and then spill their coffee over it and then get home and the dog will eat it. 
you, you see where I'm going with this. Often the claims get damaged. We forget to submit them. It happens, unfortunately. What the advantage of this is, as you're walking out of the doctor's rooms, you can scan the QR code for the doctor. It'll give you the option to submit the claim there and then. So you can fill in the details of the claim. Submit it. The claim gets processed in real time. It tells you straight away if there's any co-payment that needs to be made. You can make that payment from your Discovery Bank account. And you can walk out with confidence knowing that three, four months from now, you're not going to get this letter from the doctor saying, look, uh, you still owe me money. So that's where, for me, the real benefit comes in of the Discovery Pay account. The next aspect of it is your pay-as-you-go gymming. So this is an alternative option for gymming for members that don't want to take out a long one, two, three year contract with the gyms or members that want to be able to gym at their own convenience. So don't want to be restricted to I have to go 36 times in a year, want to go five times in a year, but every now and again want to go to one of the gyms. It works very nicely for members that do have a gym contract at a local gym but are traveling. So if I am now in Durban for business purposes and I still want to access one of the gyms, I could make use of the pay-as-you-go gym to access a once-off access to one of the Virgin Active or Planet Fitnesses down there. For anybody that activates the Vitality or the Discovery Pay account, you'll get three v pre three free visits per partner, so three to Virgin Active and three to Planet Fitness that you'll be able to use during the course of 2022. So how the benefit works is you go to the specific gym, you scan the code, you confirm the payment, you'll be able to show the proof of payment to them on your way out and doof, and you're done. You'll be able to carry on with your day, go in and gym. The last section with regards to this is anybody that does activate the Vitality or the Discovery Pay account will also get access to the Vitality travel platform, regardless of whether you are a Vitality member or not. So members that aren't on Vitality that do access the Vitality travel platform through the um, Discovery Pay will get a 10% discount on all bookings through the Vitality Travel Platform. So it would be your local and international flights, car hire, accommodation, as well as travel packages available from 1 January. If we then move over onto the Vitality benefits, and this is specifically, there's three Vitality programs for lack of a better description. You've got your Vitality Active, which is your Vitality Light. It's an intro version of Vitality. It has some of the Vitality benefit. Then you move across to your Vitality Premium. This is Vitality as we all know and love it. It's the full benefit of Vitality benefits, the rich benefits, your healthy gear, your healthy care cashbacks, healthy food, your gym benefits, your movie benefits, your active rewards. The list goes on alone. This is the Vitality we all know and love. And then you get the Vitality Purple, which is your top of the line Vitality, available for members on your executive plan or discovery card, purple card holders. And it's got the same benefits as Vitality with a few add-ons, things like discounted at-home gym rental. So Techno Gym, you can rent the equipment and you get a discount through Vitality Purple. So the first of the benefit enhancements with regards to Vitality is the Vitality Travel. The biggest enhancement with regards to Vitality Travel is the adding on of travel packages. We can now get up to 15% discount on travel packages through Royal Caribbean, Contiki and the likes. Still have access to your local and international flights, which is up to 35% discount based on your Vitality status, all the way boosted up to 75% for Discovery Bank members, or can be boosted up to 75% for your Discovery Bank members, your car, uh, your travel packages, your car hire, the accommodation, all of these available to members. But we're also changing the platform that has been done. So you're no longer going to have to go through a third party website to be able to book your uh, flights. You'll be able to do this either through the Discovery Bank, through the Vitality platform there, or through the web uh, Discovery website. So it will be a seamless booking process, all done either on your phone or on the website, integrated trip management, and you'll have access to your trip ancillaries, things like a single platform where you'll be able to access your premium travel benefits, including your Discovery Bank, Priority Fast Tracks, your lounge access, all of that available on that single point of purpose, point of contact being the Discovery app. 
Moving over, so for the members that are making use of Vitality, you know about the healthy food, care, and gear benefit, where you can get up to 25% cashback. So we're very pleased to bring in a new part, uh, which or new benefit, which is your healthy baby benefit. We can get up to 25% cashback on a wide range of day-to-day -day items, things like nappies, um, creams, all of that, all the way up to your premium essential items, car chairs, strollers, sleeper cots, camp cots, all of that through leading uh, leading providers throughout the country, Baby City and Toys R Us. So it's a very nice additional benefit. You'd go onto the website, activate the benefit. Once you've done your Vitality Health Check and your Vitality Age, it would unlock that 25% uh, cashback that you could get on those specific items. Discovery Bank members can boost this up to 50%. For Discovery members that are potentially looking at stopping smoking, we're adding on a new partner for next year, which is the world's leading effective tobacco stop smoking program, for lack of description. It's got a 52% validated tobacco quit rate. It really is a fantastic program for somebody looking at stopping smoking. We're offering an 80% discount on, a on the 12-month fully digital smoking cessation program. Well, I hate that word, your sensation program. So this is a program that will allow you as a member to try and stop smoking. It encourages you and drives you towards that stop smoking. Last area I just want to touch on, that is the Vitality Active. So this is the Vitality Light, as I mentioned earlier. It still has some of the benefits, so you get act, Vitality Active Rewards or half price movies. We're adding on the pay-as-you-go gym that I touched on earlier. Healthy food benefit is being added for next year, so members on Vitality Active will be able to get up to 20% cash back on healthy food items bought through Woolworths and Pick and Pay. And then if we look at fitness devices, and this is to try and encourage members to get more active. So members will be able to, through a subscription service, get a fully funded fitness device, some of your leading devices, Apple Watches, Garmin's, and it works on the subscription service. So you'd sign up for a two-year subscription of one of the specific devices, and then you'd need to achieve your monthly, your weekly goals through Active Rewards. If you would choose achieve two goals within the month, we would pay half of that month's subscription. If you achieve three or more goals in that specific month, we would pay the full monthly subscription for that specific month. After the two years is done, then the device is yours to do with it as and how you want. You can then sign up for another two years on a new device, or you can just carry on using your existing device without having to worry about making sure you make your active rewards on a monthly basis. And that is the changes for next year. Are there any questions? Any questions, guys? Just remember you are on mute. So if you are chatting away, <laughs> maybe just take yourself off uh, mute and put up your hand. Sue, you have a question. I have a question, yes. Um, why have the flights, um, the number of flights that you get discounts for been reduced? Because we used to get 24, why is it only six now local? The Vitality benefits are designed around holiday, for lack of a better description. These are vacation type programs. When it was set originally at the 24, what was happening is it was not being used as it was designed. Your people that were using your 24 flights on a yearly basis were using it for business purposes rather than personal benefits. And the design around the Vitality Flight Benefit is based on using them for your vacation purposes. I'm going on holiday. So very few people go on holiday more than three times per year. So your six flights that would then cover that three times per year flying to and from your holiday destination. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other questions, guys, on changes in benefits or anything around COVID, premiums, anything like that? All right, Robert, it doesn't look like we have any other questions. I thoroughly enjoyed your enthusiasm. Thank you. Um, <laughs> My pleasure. It was very good to have a session with you. And then um, I'm going to try and distribute the link. I've just been having some difficulties with IT um, taking the protection off of the link, but there will be this link shared. Um, so you can rewatch the recording or distribute it to staff if you are part of an HR, um, part of a corporate group. 
Um, and with that, thank you very much and have enjoy the rest of the last few weeks of 2021. I'd just like to come in there and <clears throat> obviously if people want to upgrade their um, plans for 2022, we need to have um, that in um, before the end of the month so that we can um, do, do all the work on upgrading everybody. Um, that can be done via an email from the um, individual or through the corporate um, HR person that deals with the medical aid. Um, as the premiums aren't increasing for January, when they do increase um, in May, there is an opportunity again for members to upgrade their plan in April for May, as was the same of the case this year in when the premiums went in up in July. So if people do miss out on upgrading, they can do, still do it next year. But obviously, we'd like to um, know the people that would like to upgrade before then. Um, also, if there are people in your companies that need need assistance, need advice on um, changing their plans, then please don't hesitate to contact um, Talia or myself to be able to advise them on that. And having said that, thank you all for attending. And um, as Talia said, have a good Christmas holiday and stay safe and uh, keep wearing masks, I think, for the, the fourth wave that may well hit. So all the best to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for your time today. Bye-bye. Yes, thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.